Hello, uh, my name is Hee Dong Jung, and uh, I'm work for I work for Drawbridge, and uh, I'm a software engineer and engineering manager here at Drawbridge, and my team is in charge of uh, S Server backend uh, web service. Um, so Drawbridge it does uh, very interesting things. So one is that it serves as to um, web web pages as well as apps. So when you open up an app, there is like a place for ads, um, and like uh, those ads are dynamically loaded. Um, so to load those ads, they have to send a request to a server, and the server has to respond with the creative or the image, um, and that's what we do. So we have to figure out which ads to respond to those uh, places. And also in the web page, the same thing happens. So whenever you refresh a web page, there is a place for the ads, and then um, they send a request to servers like uh, our servers, and then we have to respond with the image so that the image shows up on the web page. So that's one thing that we do. And then another thing that's uh, differentiates our company from other companies is that um, we have this uh, cool algorithm of um, uh, identifying users across multiple um, devices, basically. So what we try to do is that um, if you have a phone and a tablet and like a laptop, we try to figure out that this phone and the tablet and the laptop belong to the same person so that we can serve uh, ads more efficiently. Um, basically, let's say if you saw an ad in your uh, app, but you were interested in that ad and you clicked it, but you didn't pur purchase the product because like, you were on the phone, right? Um, in that case, we tried uh, to figure out uh, that user and then try to serve the same ad on the web page when you're browsing a website using uh, your laptop. In that case, uh, when you see the same ad, you will remember that you were interested in that product so that you can actually make a purchase from the web page. So I used to work at Yahoo. Um, um, at the time when I was trying to um, figure out like to move to other companies. Um, first of all, like Yahoo wasn't doing very well. So um, many people were leaving basically. So I get I got approached with uh, a lot of um, from a lot of uh, hiring managers from uh, many hiring companies. And then um, I was looking into those companies that they suggest. Um, and I was trying to I was not trying to go for the startup. But like you know, I was um, open to any any um, any opportunities basically. So what I was, uh, I just looked into those companies they they suggested and like looked through the ones that looks interesting. Um, but Drought Bridge was like very interesting to me um, because like at the time like big data was very um, popular, so everyone wanted to like do some kind of big data. Um, but like most of the companies like wanted to do the big data, but they didn't know what to do with the data. Basically, they wanted to use the big data, but they didn't have a, a solid product that, that they want to uh, build using the big data. But Drawbridge actually had an idea. So what they wanted to uh, wanted to do was to use that big data and then um, find out the users that uh, uh, has the multiple devices, basically. So they actually had a solid product, um, what to do with the big data, and I was very interested in big, big data, so that's why I decided to join Drawbridge. So the most important thing that I uh, considered when I was trying to um, find a new job was uh, uh, how much I can improve myself. So um, like in a big companies, what you do is that you just do a very small part of the things that the big company do. But like when you join a startup, it's like you have to do a lot of things because they don't have enough people. So they will let you do uh, many things that uh, you won't be able to experience in a big company. So uh, that's one of the reasons that I wanted to join startup. And then uh, Drawbridge was one of the startups that had a lot of um, good mentors. So like many people uh, that uh, was working for Drawbridge was actually ex-Googlers or like the people who uh, used to work on the big companies with a good skill. So like I knew that when I joined this company that I'll be learning from those people. Um, yeah, basically um, the hiring recruiter like approached me with like many companies um, and one of Drawbridge was just one of the companies that they asked me to do an interview with. So to be like I think uh, the most important thing is that you have to have a very like updated resume in your LinkedIn. So most recruiters uh, look into your uh, LinkedIn profile as well as all the other channels that they can uh, find you out. So uh, just have a right email address that you can be reached. And then 
uh, have a most updated uh, resume on the LinkedIn. And maybe you can, um, if, if they reach out to you, just say that you're actively looking for a job, then they'll be more active in like giving you uh, suggestions and, and like all the things that they, that you need to find a new job, basically. Mm. So I studied in uh, US for masters. So I had the F1 visa. Um, and then after I, um, and then when I joined Yahoo, they supported me on H1. Uh, so uh, it was through the company. So uh, at the time when I joined Yahoo, it was 2011, and at that time there was not many queue in H1 uh, visa uh, apply. So like I didn't have to wait, or like there was no lottery for uh, uh, getting into the H1 visa. But now um, a lot of people are applying for H1 visa, so it's uh, it's kind of um, not easy. But I think that's the most uh, easiest way to basically get visa through the company. So. That's how I got it. So for the green card, um, if the company likes you, they don't want to lose you, basically. So um, H1 is only for six years. Um, and if you prove that yourself is valuable to the company, then they will not hesitate to like apply a green card for you. So you just have to prove yourself that you are very valuable to the company and talk to your managers and ask them to support your green card. Then they will definitely help you out. Um, if they don't, uh, there's always a chance that you can move to another company which supports green card for you, then you can also apply there. So I got green card from this uh, drawbridge. They supported me. <laughs> I guess they, I was valuable to them. <laughs> yeah, in, in the beginning, they didn't um, um, guarantee anything. So like, I asked for a green card after I joined, uh, after maybe one year after I joined. So. And they said yes, they will support green card for me. So we, from then we uh, moved on to process the green card with lawyer. Um, so I was I was lucky, I guess. <laughs> so first of all, like you, when you want to move, like you have to at least get more than what you're being paid right now because uh, they want you, right? So they will probably uh, want to like want you to move from current company to your, uh, the new company that so they have to give you some kind of um, um, salary raise or something to like let you move to the new company so there you can first like you know say that you want to um, get certain amount um, if they say it's not uh, possible then you can negotiate from there um, other ways to negotiate is basically if you have other offers that um, gives you more salary than this company, then you will definitely uh, ask them to uh, ask them that like I really work for, want to work for this company, but um, actually I have a better option uh, for uh, from other companies. So like you can say those things, and then they will basically tell you that um, whether they can match that or not. So from there you can like um, decide if you really want to work for this company with a lower salary, then you just have to go with it. Otherwise, you can always choose the other option, right? Um, and then I know it's hard to get like a, a offer from multiple companies, but if you're prepared and ready and then uh, companies like you, then they will definitely give you an offer. So basically, be uh, strong in your uh, coding skills as well as uh, keep studying the interview questions and, and like uh, uh, stay close to like all these new technologies then like, definitely you will have a um, chance to have multiple offers. So I have different suggestions for different uh, people. I say uh, for the new grads, um, I guess it's, it might be a little late, but you should have a good GPA. Because uh, for the companies, when they look at the resume, it's hard to judge you by just like um, the project that you did at school. Because uh, most projects, like everyone did it. And like um, the result of the project is basically shows on your GPA, right? So um, first of all, you have to have a good GPA so that people um, look at it and see that, oh, this person was at least diligent in doing their homeworks or like, you know, um, doing their projects. And also be prepared to uh, explain what you did at school. Um, when you work in teams, like some people work on certain things and the other per people work on the other things, right? So you have to be able to describe what part of the work you did for the project. Um, so that in the interview you, you can have the so the interviewers can feel that you were actually working and be part of the team. Um, for the ones who's already working, um, uh, I think the important thing is that you have to know what you did and then you have to like uh, make it such that like uh, 
you know about what you did at your current company. So they will ask you what uh, are the important things that you did um, and you will have to be able to explain it. If you cannot, then they will not think that you did the work, right? So whatever you put in your resume, you have to be able to explain in detail. And also, um, you have to study all the uh, interview questions, coding questions. Uh, um, they will ask you all the coding questions. If you are, uh, even if you're good at like your current uh, work and you did a lot of things, if you cannot solve the simple coding question, they will not uh, want you. So just be prepared. Um, try to uh, um, read the um, data structure um, books and like all the algorithm books and try to be uh, always uh, be able to solve the questions that they ask. And your uh, just have a strong computer uh, programming language that you want to use when you're doing an interview as well. To become a valuable person at work is it's not easy. Basically, um, first of all, you have to always meet the expectations that they have for you, right? So if you if they want you to finish a work at, at, uh, at some certain time, then you should be able to finish it, even if uh, it might sometimes seem like too short of a, a, a deadline, but you should be able to solve it. Um, otherwise, you have to have a good explanation uh, about uh, why it can't be done in, in that deadline. Um, and another thing is, that is important is to be uh, responsible. So when you are assigned the work, you have to be responsible and you have to be able to uh, um, follow through all the steps that you have to take so, uh, so that the manager doesn't have to babysit what you're working on. So you have to be always responsible for the works that you're assigned to and um, also be uh, proactive like instead of just waiting for your manager to give you work um, just if you don't have anything to do just uh, always like bug your manager saying I have uh, I have done all the things that you've given me so can you tell me um, what else I can do or um, maybe always try to talk to your manager when you are uh, you don't have anything just don't sit there and like do nothing um, so uh, it's good to always talk to the managers um, when you have um, uh, doubts or like if you don't know what to do um, so that they know that you are not just sitting there doing nothing but you are pro proactively trying to do a work and also um, if you encounter some issues like uh, problems that you don't know the answer to then like try to research on your own first and then like have some solutions ready before you talk to your manager just don't go to manager and say like I don't know what to do so tell me what to do instead of that it's better to always like have some solutions that you think is possible and then like present them with those solutions so that the manager knows that you at least thought about the problem and tried to solve it but you are not um, sure which one is the best solution so then they will be able to guide you with uh, a better options and with like why it's a better option right and then after that you'll be able to know like at least learn what's the important thing and and another thing is like once they teach you one thing then don't uh, try to absorb that and then make your make it your own so that you don't ask the same question again and again so that's one of the things that you should avoid because like if you keep asking the same question again and they will think that you not you're not able to learn the new things or that you're not learning the things that they teach you already so it sometimes for first aid man managers i think so um, engineers definitely need to speak uh, good English. Um, uh, I guess not as much as the other uh, positions, but uh, it is important to understand what's, uh, what the managers are trying to, trying to explain to you. Um, also, you should be able to uh, explain what you think uh, is the problem when you're trying to solve the problem, or uh, at least to communicate in the email saying, um, I have done these things and like these are pending. Also, like you know, it's it's not like you're working alone on your own thing. It's uh, always a collaborative work, so you should be able to describe what you're working on and tell them what uh, the issues that you have been encountered and how you solved it. And also, so that the manager knows how it's going, and uh, um, and then if he has any inputs, they he the manager he or she needs to um, communicate to you. And if you don't understand, it's very hard for them to uh, make you productive. Um, so, uh, Drawbridge is a fantastic company. First of all, um, I learned a lot after I joined this company. Um, we have great engineers. Um, they are all smart and then we always try to hire the best engineers. So our hiring process is very uh, aggressive. We ask a lot of questions and then we um, expect them to solve all these questions. So, uh, whoever is hired to Drawbridge is very smart and then we can uh, learn from each other. So, um, and then 
Um, so another thing about Dravich is that we don't sit uh, um, on the legacy programs or like we don't like settle on the things. We always try to improve the uh, product and then we always, always try to move on. So um, we always look into new uh, frameworks that comes out and if it's, uh, it's going to benefit us, we'll try to use that and then um, always like learn to new, learn new things. So it's always good that uh, you keep learning instead of like doing the same thing every day. I know it's hard to uh, uh, find a job, um, but there is a lot of positions open and you can always try uh, um, and try to get the job. Uh, for me, um, I apply like more than uh, 20 companies and I only got an offer from Yahoo. So even it's possible that there's only one company that gives you an offer, but once you get into the company and do well, there will uh, be more chances to uh, move to other uh, companies as well. So don't give up even if you fail most of the time, but um, there will be a company that wants you.